track. Have you ever played a football or ping pong game without counting the goals or points? How do you know who has won? Or driven a car without any dashboard? You don't know if you have gas left, what speed you are going, if the engine is okay. Nothing. It's the same with money. If you don't know the problem, you can't find the solution. So note down everything. Our brain is not a computer. We tend to remember what we don't like and minimize what we like. We have trouble computing an accurate yearly picture of the little expenses done daily. What we remember is not accurate. It's not objective. So how can we take good decisions? To find the right solution, you need to know the problem. So know down everything, the ins and the outs. Use what works for you. Notebook, an app, keep the receipts, use a money software and a spreadsheet, whatever works best for you. But track. The second tool is the spending limit. Have you heard of needs and wants? Let's take a few examples. Let's say I've bought a flashy smartphone and every month I have to pay for the plan going with it. Is it a need or a want? I've bought quite an expensive laptop on credit. Every month I have to pay for the installment. Need or want? Many things seem to fall in between. So what's more relevant to help us manage money is whether we still have the hand on an expense or whether we have to pay no matter what. And these are commitments. We have agreed to pay. It can be the rent, utilities or a debt to pay. Even if it's for flashy things that you could live without, but you have paid on credit. Once you have committed, you have to pay. And what happens if you don't? It becomes a debt. So it's not so much about needs and wants, which are subjective, and advertising, your friends or yourself can easily sweet talk you and turn wants into needs. But what's more important is to be clear on commitments. How much of your income you have promised to others so, one, before taking any new commitment, any new debt, calculate how you will pay. Don't carry more than you can bear. Once you have committed, you have to make sure you keep enough money to pay for these commitments. Let's go through an example. Let's say you earn 1,600 and you've listed your commitments. You have the rent to pay, 800, utilities, 80, the phone, 40. And some commitments are only once a year, like the tax to pay. Let's say it's 600 per year. So divided by 12 months, that makes 50 per month. You have to set aside all these commitments. You have $630 left. Divided by 30 days, that's $21 a day. These $21 are what is left for you to live, to buy food, take transportation, etc. The expenses where you still can decide how much to spend. And what happens if you spend more than 21 a day? You can't pay your commitments. You're spending what you've promised to others. So the amount left after commitments is your spending limit. Most of us only remember one number, our salary. But that's its wrong limit. It gives us the impression we can spend up to that level. Why, a big part of our income is already committed to others. So forget about your salary. And only remember one number, your daily spending limit. The third tool to help you in the money game is your brain. Stop, think, decide. Before buying anything, think why. Don't look at the what. For example, sunglasses. Why? Is it to protect your eyes when it's sunny? Then fine. You can compare the different models and prices. See what you can afford. Or is it to look cool? What will these sunglasses bring to your life? Don't buy, then think and regret. Do the other way around. Stop a minute, think, then decide. How to keep your brain cool and focus on what matters? Narrow the choices. Keep motivated. Don't look at what you can't buy, but look at what you want to save money for. Write your goals, how much they cost and how much to save every month. And keep your goals with you you'll be less tempted to buy other things in the shops. All these tools help our brain set limits and remember. The last tool we're going to see does both, the budget. A budget is a list of what you will use your income for. 
you list how much you earn, then all the various expenses you plan to have. And of course, the expenses you plan to do much later on and you want to save for. Then see how to fit all these short-term and long-term expenses in your income. Change the numbers to find the best way. It needs to be realistic and something you're comfortable to achieve. You should write your budget, even if you don't earn money. As soon as you get money from your parents, for example, budget how you will use it. Why people don't like budgeting? Why they say it takes time. But actually, it takes more time to figure out how to get out of debt. A budget is like a prevention tool. It's like eating healthy before getting sick. If you don't budget, you let others choose for you. The shops, for example. Two, many people say, well, we can't plan everything. That's fair enough. But it's better to plan 90% than nothing at all. Not planning is like walking blindfolded. Opening your eyes doesn't make the potholes on the road disappear, but you can see them in time and try your best to avoid them. So don't walk blindfolded, plan. And a budget is a useful skill. It will be useful at work, in your family, for organizations where you volunteer, or for projects to start or run your business. Now a few last tip about the other money game players, banks. Banks are businesses. Use your brain, ask questions and compare. Banks have earned more than billions of dollars just from overdraft fees, i.e. from our not managing money well. Remember too that whenever you take a debt, you don't have to pay back. So you're actually spending tomorrow's income. By overcoming all the seven levels of difficulty, do you remember which there are? And using the five tools, you're well on your way to win. But what does it mean? Winning the money game. Is it to have more money? It's up to you to define what you mean with winning. But remember one thing. You are not alone. There are more than 7 billion people playing the money game. Each of your financial decisions, each of your expenses, impact other people and the earth. Your impact is your responsibility.